15 years. Six countries. Two amazing children. And it's a beautiful journey. A beautiful journey indeed. <laughs>pointed out to my husband that this week marks 15 years right. since we first started this love affair, if you will. Well, yeah, yeah, it was 15 years ago you started chasing me, you know, uh, you tried to initiate the whole, the whole thing, you know, I play it hard to get, of course, because, you know, I'm a man of value. We just thought that with it being 15 years and us celebrating a pretty big milestone in our relationship, that this was a great time to tell our story and set the record straight on who did the chasing. So I think this is the first time that we've ever done this. We are going to tell our story from beginning until the present time. So how much buckle time, up. Yeah, how much time y'all got? Buckle up. It has been a journey indeed. Yeah, so it was uh, a quiet day. In Las Vegas, Nevada, I was working out at Impact Sports. I had just graduated high school, uh, just minding my business, you know. Um, and I get a message on Facebook, and the message reads like, "Hey, you know, we know the same people. I really admire you, the man that you are, and who you've grown to be. And I kind of want to be a part of uh, what you got going on." The and message said nothing like that. I'm going to go ahead and cut him off. So it was. June 2008, like I said, we had both just graduated high school, and I did send him a message. Wait, wait, so y'all heard that. She messaged me. Okay, The message read, hey, a mutual friend told me that I should reach out to you because we're both going to the University of Miami. Shout out to Canes. Shout out to Canes. And we're both from Atlanta. Like, how cool is that? She said that it would be cool for us to know each other when we got there, and I thought so, too. Like, I'm so excited about college. Like, are you looking forward to freshman year? I mean, it was the same same. Nothing thing. about admiration. That, nothing like that. That's what she said, but if you read between the lines, that's what she meant. So, can you tell them what you responded and said back to me? Well... Um, a famous poet by the name of Aaliyah, rest in peace, had a saying, uh, and I believe it goes, girl, I got to watch my back because I'm not just anybody. And my response back was, what's your aim? Because again, I don't know this young lady from a can of paint. And honestly, I thought it was a setup because I'm looking, you know, I'm an attractive guy, but a woman of this caliber, you know, she kind of out of my league. So I'm like, this might be a setup. I don't know. I'm going to just cut straight to the chase. What's your aim? He asked me for my AIM, just to, to set the record straight for those of you that might not know. He didn't say, like, aim, like, what's your intention? He said, like, what's your AIM, yeah. like your AOL instant messenger. Right, right. And I sent him um my AOL instant messenger mm -hmm. and... Pretty much we started chatting um, shortly thereafter. I remember that his birthday was like right, you know, right there with it that same week. And I remember like wishing him a happy birthday and like him being like, oh, yeah, like I'm just chilling in Vegas and me being like, oh, OK, cool. And us basically just talking all summer, like, you know, yeah. just like nothing, nothing heavy, just like you know, text messaging back and forth here and there. It yeah. was a little flirty, but, you know, nothing too serious at all. Here's the thing. You was trying to gauge my interest. She was making, like, subliminal statuses on AIM, and it it was mostly, like, song lyrics, but she was alluding to... Because I think one was, like, uh, some about one. Superman. It was it was Rick Ross. Yeah. And who else was on that song? I don't know, but... It was Here I Am. I got a couple of dollars, I'm going to spend them on yeah, her. Yeah. yeah. You know, every, every superwoman super needs a superman. Right. And he, like, messaged me and he was like, here I am. Good one, honey. I mean, it got the job, man. <laughs> Apparently it, it did. It got the job, bro. Yeah. All summer long, we just communicated over AIM. And then um, towards the end of the summer, the University of Miami hosts a summer send-off, which is basically mm -hmm. an event for everybody that's from Atlanta going to the University of Miami that upcoming semester. And I remember the morning of the summer send-off, I get a message from 
no other than I won't put your AIM name on blast, but your AIM name. And he's like, hey, are you going to the send off today? And I'm like, you know, yeah, are you? And he's like, oh, I'm going to see you there. And I'm like. Okay, like, what does that mean? Yeah, you know, I'm a man. I'm a man of few words. I'm like, you know, get ready. I'm, I'm a beater. And so I get there with my mom a few minutes late, and a few. No, no, you was, you was really late. Y'all was really late. I was a little late. Y'all was real late. However, Mr. Jones here had saved me a seat at his table. I did. You know, I, honestly, I was just going about my business, enjoying summer, and I had forgot about it because my I mom forgot about the event. Yeah, yeah, it slipped my mind. Okay, um, okay. And uh, my mom had reminded me because I think I had went out the night before, and my mom came in and was like, you know, pulling the blinds back, like, "Hey, get up, we got to go to this." So in my mind, I sent her a text because I'm like, if she's not gonna be there, there's no point in me going. Oh, that's how you felt. I mean, yeah, I guess. That's so sweet. You know, I was like, if she ain't gonna be there, there ain't no point in me going. So, um. Uh, I never forget though. I was again not anticipating her going, so I didn't really dress my best. Um, I had like a wrinkled Azad like polo. It was awful, and I I remember the whole ride there, looking down at my shirt, like damn, I really should have picked out something a little bit better. Than that. <laughs> so um, we attended this event together, and honestly. I think that that, like, meeting each other in person, that was the first time that we met in person, mm -hmm. by the way, even though we had been, like, communicating all summer. That was, for me, at least, when I saw, like, oh, okay, I actually do kind of like him. Like, before then, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, he was cool, but, like, we were just texting. Like, it wasn't a big deal. But, really? like... Look at me. I mean, I had never seen you in person. I had just seen pictures. But on that day, it was like, oh, okay, like, I do kind of like him. Like, you know, like... He's cool. And so I remember like that night and pretty much every night until we got to campus, like from that point forward, we were like on the phone at night, like yeah, talking yeah, yeah. all yeah. night. You guys know how we used to do back in the day, like up on the phone, yeah. like you hang up, no, you hang up, like falling asleep with the phone in the bed, like stuff like well, that. Like you doing something wild, like you on the phone and like sweeping the ceiling, just... Just doing random stuff because you really just enjoying the conversation. Yeah. So then a few weeks later, we both arrived on campus at the University of Miami. I remember a few hours after I got like all settled that you texted me and you were like, oh, hey, like, let me show you around campus. Because yeah, he had been yeah. in, at campus mm -hmm. already during the summer because he was an athlete. And so he was like, yeah. let me like show you around. So I remember you like walking to my dorm and coming to get me and like walking me around. Where we get to campus and you know, he shows me around campus. But then honestly, like, and this is the real story, y'all, from that point things kinda slowed down a little bit with us because you were on campus and you were doing whatever you were doing with everyone else that had also arrived on campus and Allegedly. I was I was hearing about these things. Allegedly. And so I had told you from Allegations. The False allegations. I had told you from the beginning that I really didn't want a relationship anyway. And now hearing all the stuff that he had going on, I was like, okay, yeah, like I don't really need to be like in the mix with that. And so I started doing my own thing. I actually started um, communicating with another gentleman. Nothing serious, but like, you know, like I was like talking to him, whatever, not in a relationship at all. Um, but yeah, we were both kind of doing our own thing for about... Y'all, this is like all over the course of a week, probably. This yeah, no, was not no, a yeah. long time. No, no, no. We, 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 we hit the ground running. Yeah. Now, wait, in my defense, though, we did have instances where people would try to, you know, come in and infiltrate and block out blessings. You can't, you can't deny that. People lied on me. People made up stories to try to basically steal me away from me. I mean, possibly. I, who knows if these things are lies or the truth? Well, who knows and who cares at this point? Right. So, yes, I started talking to another guy casually. He was doing whatever it was that he was doing. And it got to, like, the last part of freshman orientation. So we're, like, you know, right before classes are going to start. And there was a phone party. Would you like to tell the story of the phone party? So, you know, it's a phone party. Everybody's going to be there. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I got my teammates, we walking in and 
I see my now future bride, and we lock eyes, and she kind of turned the shoulder, like gave me the cold shoulder. I'm like, okay, maybe she ain't see me. I'm gonna make myself visible. So, uh, you know, I kind of maneuver in her line of sight. And uh, she hit me with the other shoulder this time. So I'm like, okay, no, no, this is on purpose now. So I go over to her, I'm like, uh, excuse me, you, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna say hi? What did I say? Oh, hey. That's exactly what I said. And walked <laughs> off. Like, oh, hey? Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, he was doing whatever he was doing, and I really did not want any parts of it from that moment on. Like, I was like, I'm just gonna move on. Like, we had a great little summer of communication, and we'll let that be it. But he obviously felt some sort of way that I was not going to say hello oh, hey. because that same evening after the phone party, there was an after party down the street at someone's house. And I don't think we've ever told this story. I don't even, I don't think anyone of the prior, uh, our close friends know this. So, like I said, I was talking to another gentleman and nothing but respect for this other gentleman. So, of course, I will not like give any identifying in information on him. But I arrived at the party with this other gentleman. And, you know, at the party, like, we weren't together. So, at the party, everyone's doing their own thing. And he comes up to me at this party and he was like, oh, just so you know, like, you're leaving with me. I'm going to tell you when it's time to go. Yeah. And I think <laughs> I was so shocked. I was just like, okay. <laughs> well, first of all, you didn't do it. You didn't say it like that. You was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like you you kind of uh, okay. You drugged the ay out like okay. I was I was shocked, y'all. Um, yeah. but that is indeed what happened <laughs> when he was ready to go. He came was like, hey, it's time to go, and I left with him. So we left together um, from that party. Yeah, and that was that. We will fast forward to Labor Day weekend, which was like a couple days later after yeah. the party incident. And I don't really think we have talked very much since the party, like just text here and there. But I remember it was Labor Day weekend, which we consider like our official anniversary. He texted me and he was like, hey, let's meet at the Rat. And for those that don't know, the Rat is like the restaurant on campus yeah. at the University of Miami. So what was going through your head when you said that text? Uh, I was more so like, man, let's go and stop playing for real. You know, like, let's let's not block our blessings here. Like what what basically what are we what are we doing? What are we doing? Let's 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 make it official. And that's exactly what he said at the rat. He was like, Yeah, like we need to just stop playing. Like we know we're gonna be together, so like what are we waiting on? Yeah. And yeah. I was like, well, I need some time to think about it. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, when you was like, I'll think about it, I gave you all ultimatum. Like, sweetheart, this train is leaving. I'm, I'm just playing. I didn't say that. He did not say I that. Didn't say that. <laughs> but no, yeah, she was just like, well, give me some time to think about it. And so I took my time. I think it probably took me about 45 minutes. And I texted him back and I was like, yeah, okay. Like, you're right. And that was that. From that point on, um, we were in a relationship. Our The news of our relationship spread campus like wildfire. And I don't really know how because I feel like I told like one or two people. You must have told everybody. Look at your face. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I put the word out. I put the word out. But I will never forget, like once people found out we were together, a guy friend of mine was like, hey, like, do you know who that is that you're, that you're in a relationship with? And I was like, like, DJ, like, what do you mean? He was like. He was like, you know he plays basketball, right? And I was like, I mean, yeah, like, I know he's on the basketball team. And he was like, do you know that he was, like, you know, top players, like, in the country? Like, that he's, like, a really big deal, like, draft pick type basketball player? And I, y'all, I had no idea. Like, even though we're both from Atlanta, we grew up in very different worlds. Like, very and I went to a tiny, tiny private school called Paideia. He went to a huge public school called Wheeler. Like, mm. our school lives and, like, you know, athletically never cross paths. Like, we never played against each nah. other or anything like but that. He, but here's the irony, though. When we look back, you know, years later and we talk, we were at some of the same places. Yeah, like, same parties yeah, and stuff at, like that. Yeah, we were at, like, Quincy's uh, Sweet 16 party yeah. at, uh, what was that, Belver Room? 
It was Velvet Room. Yeah, it was a yeah. Velvet Room. So we were like in the same places. We just never, you know, crossed paths. Yeah. And then speaking of Sweet 16, yeah. apparently he didn't know I was on my Super Sweet 16. Yeah. So it got back to me because <laughs> here's the thing. The, around campus, the rumblings was like, the first rumor was that you was Judge Mathis's daughter. <laughs> like the TV judge. That's not correct. And that's, she's not. Because that's what, that was her whole thing. It was like, yeah, you know, her dad is a judge. And I'm like, okay. And they were like, nah, like Judge Mathis. Like the one on TV? Um, So that was the first rumor. But I never put two and two together until I think we made it official on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And people, like, uh, my homeboy was, like, sending me messages. Like, bro, like, do y'all ever talk about her show? I'm like, her show? What are you talking about? I was like, yeah, yeah, she was on Sweet 16. And for me, like, I, growing up, I never really had cable. And then, in high school, I was too busy playing basketball, so I didn't really watch a lot of TV like that. But, yeah, I got the message, like, do y'all ever talk about her show? <laughs> and I think uh, I went back and watched it. In study hall. Let's yeah, because you like you like sent me like a like a picture of it or something, and I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, like why are you watching that? Yeah. Like I was like horrified by it, but I don't know. I think it I think it was like kind of special for both of us that like neither one of us like knew like <laughs> you know like yeah. there was never any question of if either one of us had any kind of ulterior motive because we both went into it kind of naive to like the fact that who we were with was like a big deal or whatever you know yeah yeah it it was just very and it, it's kind of concerning because i'm like <laughs> nowadays with yeah. like all the social media that's yeah. out here now it would be impossible yeah it would be totally it was, impossible but i remember reflecting back like bro who like is allison even your real name right. like is that, is that her <laughs> stage or tv name yeah our college experience i feel like honestly was normal of most college experiences it was not perfect like i'm not gonna sit here and paint this picture for you guys like we were just like smooth sailing all throughout colleges we definitely had our ups and downs we definitely both made mistakes and we definitely had a lot of fun like yeah. we both had a great college experience i feel like yeah when we look back i mean we were we were just we were kids we were kids like and and when we look back and reflect on the issue that we had it was very <laughs> immature, like, kid-type stuff. Yeah, it was a lot of, like, tit-for-tat, like, you yeah. did this, so I'm going to do that type stuff. And it was yeah. what it was. You know, I know, like, one rough spot that I always, like, point out when it came to our relationship in college was that my dad passed away in college. Mm -hmm. And, of course, like, I went through kind of a rough period after that with just kind of, you know, emotionally, I was all over the place. And I remember that we broke up shortly after that. And that was the only time that we broke up. And I was like, yeah, we might be over. Like, it might be the end. Apparently, you didn't think that. Nah. <laughs> That's, but, like, again, looking back, like, we broke up. But, like, in my head, do you remember how we got back together? Yeah. Yeah, your, your car needed an oil change. Yeah. I, I remember you were like, oh... I don't know how the lines of communicate. No, I think you text me and you were like, hey, um, don't want to bother you, but do you know where I can get my oil changed? And I'm like, like well, what's, what's going on? Like, is, oh, yeah, my car is making a noise and apparently it needs an oil change. And I'm like, all right, like, I got class, but I'll drive over there parking and take it to get it changed. And I went and got her oil changed. I think we said like maybe five words to each other. He was like, "Oh, thank you so here's much." Here's the keys. Like, like here, she gave me the keys. Like, here's the keys. Thank you so much. And I went and got the oil changed. And I got returned her car back. And I was just like, "So, you you cooking for dinner, or can, I, can yeah. I stay for dinner?" Yeah. And I was like, "I mean, yeah, like it's it's almost ready." Because I I knew he was gonna stay for dinner, so of course I was prepared. You're right. <laughs> and yeah. you know that was that that was that was like the middle of our senior year. And I I specifically remember that like a week after that dinner, when we got back together, we like had a conversation, and we were like, "Okay, like this is for real. Like we're about to graduate. So if we're if we're doing this now, like we're doing this as grown ups, and we're doing this forever." 
And I guess we meant that because that's what we did. Mm -hmm. I mean, we finished college. He left college a couple of months. Was it months? Yeah, I, I left. I went to Santa Barbara to work out for pre-draft. So he left. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, obviously stayed. We both graduated together same day. Had a joint graduation party with our families. Mm -hmm. And um, after graduation, we bought a town home back in Atlanta. We moved back home and we moved in together, like right mm -hmm. away. And I think that's a testament to, like, our bond. Because that was my rookie year. So I was with the Orlando Magic. Mm -hmm. And, you know... I went undrafted, uh, got a place, but Orlando never felt like home to me. Like yeah. I, even the apartments, like the apartments were were bare. The feeling I had, I was just like, this ain't my home. My home is where she is. And we owned our home in Atlanta, and I remember at that point, like I would bounce back and forth. I probably spent the majority of my time with you in Orlando, yeah. but I would like whatever he would have long away trips and things like that, I will go back to Atlanta. And that's kind of how we, you know, made it work for the first couple of years, even your next year. Like I still kind of went back and forth, but it was yeah. after your rookie season with the magic that you proposed. Proposal story. So we had planned, we, like yeah. I, like I. Like he planned that. anything ever. Right. Uh, we had planned this big trip to Aruba and, um, we were there and, I, you know, we were having a great time and we went to a jewelry store. Because I think I was talking about getting a Hublot mm -hmm. and we went to go look at Hublot's high-end jewelry store and you just ventured off into the ring section. Well, not quite. You kept telling me like, oh, like you don't want to look at rings? And I'm like, honestly, y'all, I was like very irritated with him by this point because yeah. I remember... <laughs> Right before Valentine's Day, why would he do this to me? Uh, he asked me for my ring size, right? And then he got me a watch for Valentine's Day. I remember literally, like, after I thought he was asleep, I think I found out after that you were awake. I, mean, I remember I was bawling because why would you ask a, a girl that you've been dating now? We've been together for, what, five years? Six, five years. Five like, now. you asked me for my ring size right before Valentine's Day and then get me a watch. And so when he was telling me in Aruba, like, oh, you don't want to look at rings, I was like, for what? For what? Why? Why right. don't you look at rings? Right, right. You didn't see the vision. You didn't see the vision. But I, again, I understand. I, I wasn't, you know, privy to it. I, I didn't think much of it, you know. So she found a ring and I was just like, oh, you like this one? She was like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's beautiful, whatever. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, so, lady, I'm not getting a Hublot, but hold this ring for me. And I didn't see any of this. So right. I don't know what type of land I was living in. Yeah, so the next day, I was like, yo, um, and this was in, like, the, the village of Aruba. So, it was walking distance um, from our hotel. And I think I had gone to the spa or something. Yeah, you went to the spa, and I told you I was going to go work out. Yeah. And um, I went to the shop. Got the ring, came back, went on about our day. I forgot where I even hid the ring. I think I hid it in like a shoe or something. I don't know. Came back. We had a, a regular night throughout the day. Do you remember our dinner that night? Yeah. Wait. So for dinner that night, I made all of our dinner reservations. And like the whole trip, we have been eating at like, remember like really nice, fancy restaurants? Yeah. And then this particular night, I was like, oh, I thought we would like do something different. We're going to go to Smoky Bones, I think was the name of it. It was like a like a, like a, a rib, shack rib shack on the yeah. beach. It so was we a went rib, yeah. And ate barbecue. Yes. And so, you know, I remember that. I'm thinking in my head, like, I can't propose to this lady with barbecue sauce. Like, I can't propose <laughs> to this lady. I know my, my wife, like. She's not going for this. Like, I'm going to propose to her in a rib shack? Like, no, she's not going for that. So earlier that day, I had texted her mom, got her mom's blessing. Also, side note, before her father passed away, and we always joke about this, and I think spiritually this was his way of giving us his blessings. I think this was sophomore year, junior year. Yeah. We had all went to dinner. And uh, I was just joking with him. And I was nudging out. So I was like, hey, watch this. And I was like, uh, Mr. Mathis. And, of course, he was into another conversation. So, yeah. I was like, hey, man, uh, me and Allison, we uh, 
we're gonna get married. We're gonna go to the courthouse tomorrow. Like, is that cool? And, you know, joking, of course. My sense of humor, I thought it was funny. And he looks at me square in the face and he's like, Yeah, get just finish college first. That is what he said. And it, it kind of like threw me back because I'm like, I was just joking, but. He said, Yeah, like he, he said, Not right now, please, but he said, right. Okay. He basically said, You know, cool. Fast forward at. Every night on that trip, we would go and sit at the beach. I would smoke a cigar. We'd bring our speaker. We would drink um, and just sit under the stars. And so I looked at her and I just asked her. I was like, you know, this is beautiful. She was like, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's really, it's really nice. I was like, could you do this with me, like, for forever? And she looked at me and she was like, yeah, I, I, I would love to. I was like, well, let's do it. Then he got down on one knee, all that stuff. And um, needless to say, I said yes. So <laughs> we came back from Aruba engaged. And we had like a year and a half long engagement. Mm -hmm. um, he was still playing. And so, of course, we had to get married during the off season. We planned our wedding for August 30th. And I'll never forget. So he finishes his current season. And we're trying to figure out, you know, where he's going to play the next season. And he actually signed with a team in Italy. So mm -hmm. the team in Italy literally wanted him to come like before the wedding initially. And he was like, yeah, like, sorry, I'm not going to be able to get there because yeah. like I'm getting married on August 30th. And they were like, OK, cool. Um, you can report on September 1st. Yeah. <laughs> it's just funny, like in hindsight, how teams overseas operate. And even then, that was like a stretch for them. Yeah. Because usually especially like they in Europe, wanted you there like august 15th right they wanted me there august 12th yeah they wanted me there august 12th and i was like yeah i'm getting married august 30th um but like in hindsight like you know that was like a big a big deal so we had a beautiful wedding like still <laughs> you know something that like we talk about still something that our friends talk about and <laughs> Like it was, it was the best. It was the best day. Oh my god! It was. I guess it. I still stories still come up to this day about our wedding. Yes, day. and so we had the most beautiful wedding, and then two days later, we were literally on a plane to start our lives together in Italy. 